After reviewing the substitution rule, the next main rule to cover is something called integration by parts. Substitution rule was an inverse to the chain rule. An integration by parts is a kind of inverse to the product rule, so let me start with the product rule. Here's the rule. The derivative of a product splits up into two terms, and each of those terms has one of the two derivatives. Well, I can integrate both sides of this equation, and then the integral on the right splits up over addition into two integrals. The integral on the left is the integral of a derivative, so it cancels off, leaving the original product on the left. But on the right, no such cancellation is possible, since the integrals are all products of a derivative and some other function. So instead, what I can do is I can solve for one of the two integrals on the right. So I'll isolate the first. I am dropping the bracket x notation for the functions, but that's only a notational change to be more concise and is a pretty common notational change we make when we understand that these are functions of some variable. The result of the algebra is a new equation which relates two integrals, the integrals of df dx times g and the integral of f times dg dx. I don't get a nice, simple reverse product rule. Integration is not this kind to us. Everything for integration is always a bit more complicated, but instead I get a rule that might be useful for certain products, since I can change the right side into the left side. So how do I actually use this new rule, this integration by parts? Well, if I have an integral of a product, I try to see if I can make it look like the left side of this equation. Is there a piece of the integration that can serve as the df over dx in this equation as the derivative of something? And is there another piece that can serve as g? If I can make that work, I'll label the two pieces, and then I'll cal calculate f and dg dx, since both are needed for the right side. I'll need the antiderivative of df dx for the function f, and I'll need the derivative of g. Well, then I'll use these three pieces to create the right side. And the result is a function minus a new integral. So I haven't actually finished the integration, but the hope is that the new integral will be easier than the original, something that can actually be solved. This sounds pretty laborious, and it certainly can be, but it is also a technique that makes otherwise unapproachable integrals manageable. And it's what we have. As with all integration techniques, there isn't really any guarantee that it will work at the start. You have to try it out and see if the resulting pieces are, in fact, any easier than the original. Finally, this also works for definite integrals. The setup is the same. The only thing that is not immediately obvious is what to do with the non-integral term, the f times g on the right side. And the answer is to just evaluate. Once integration is finished, the resulting functions are evaluated on the endpoints, and that same logic applies to this term in integration by parts. I'm going to do a number of examples to show the technique. I'll start with this. I have a product of two terms, x and e to the x. I need to choose which is the df dx and which is the g. So let me start by choosing df dx to be e to the x and g to be x. Then I need to calculate the other two pieces, f and dg dx. To calculate f, I need an antiderivative. But the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x. I don't need a constant of integration here. Any antiderivative will do, so I'll choose the antiderivative with constant set to 0. The derivative of g is 1. Well, then I can fill in the right side with these pieces. fg becomes x times e to the x, and f dg dx becomes just e to the x. Integration by parts here has helped. The new integral is a known integral, and this is always the hope, that even though there are more terms and complicated steps on the way, the result is an integral that is known. So I can now just finish this example. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x, and I finally add the constant of integration, and I can even factor this result to put it in a slightly clearer form at the end. Let me do the same example again, but let me make the other choice. I have the product in the integral, x and e to the x. I need to choose df dx and g, since those are the left side of the setup for integration by parts. Last time I chose df dx to be e to the x and g to be x. This time I'll choose df dx to be x and g to be e to the x. 
Then I calculate the other two pieces, f and dg dx. The antiderivative of, f is, of x is x squared over 2, and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Well, then I put these pieces into the formula. And the result is the functions f of g, and then the integral of x to the squared over 2 times e to the x. But the integral on the right side is now more complicated. It's sort of even worse than the integral I started with. With these choices, integration by parts doesn't actually help at all. In fact, it just made the integral more difficult. I did this other order to show that there are no guarantees with this technique. Trying it may not lead to an easier integral. In fact, it may lead to a more difficult integral. I have to just abandon this. There's no more progress I can make using integration by parts this way for this particular example. Here's another example. The product in the integral is x times the cosine of x. I need to choose which one to set as df dx and which one to set as g. One thing to think about with these choices is using the derivative of g to simplify the integral. If I choose g equals x, then the derivative will just be 1, which is very nice. Therefore, I'll choose df dx to be cosine and g to be x. Then I calculate the other two pieces. The antiderivative of cosine is sine, so f is sine x, and the derivative of x is 1, so dg dx is just 1. Well, then I fill in the right side of the integration by parts formula, and I am left with an integral of sine x. This is progress, since this integral is easier than the original integral. I integrate sine x to get negative cosine, and then the two negatives cancel, and the end result is x sine x plus cos x plus c. Here is another example. This one looks very much like the first example, but there is an x squared now instead of just an x. I'll choose the same setup that worked earlier. df dx is the exponential, which is always nice since it has such a simple antiderivative, and g is x squared. Well, then I calculate the two other pieces. f is e to the x, and dg dx is 2x. And then I fill in the right side of integration by parts. The result is x squared e to the x minus the integral of 2x e to the x. This is still not finished, but the process has dropped the degree of the x term by 1. x squared has become x, and this is still useful. However, to finish, I need to use integration by parts a second time. And this can happen. Sometimes two or more uses of the technique are required to finish the integral. In the second use of integration by parts, I choose df dx to be e to the x and g to be 2x, which is almost exactly the same as the first example. Then the other two parts are f to be e to the x and dg dx to be 2. I'll replace the remaining integral on the right by the right side of integration by parts using these pieces. And the final result is the integral of 2e to the x, which is just 2e to the x. And all in all, I get three terms in the final calculation, x squared e to the x, minus 2x e to the x, plus 2e to the x, plus c. Note that there are two negatives for the last term, the negative outside the bracket and the negative inside, which makes this term positive. Sign errors are pretty easy with integration by parts, so do be careful to keep track of the plus and minus sign. I'm going to keep going with examples. I want to redo example one, but now with bounds to make it clear how integration by parts works for definite integrals. I do the same setup as I did for example 1. df dx is e to the x and g is x, so that f is e to the x and dg dx is 1. Then I fill in the right side by integration by parts. The only difference now is that I put an evaluation bar on the middle term, the fg term. Well, then I finish the e to the x integral, which is just also evaluated from 1 to 2, and I do all the evaluations. x e to the x becomes 2 e to the 2 minus e, and e to the x becomes e to the 2 minus e as well, and all of this simplifies down to just e squared.